let's look at the Torah. What does the emotion of terror do? Well, it does one of three things generally, depending on its severity. So what are those three things? Do you know? Exactly. So, so fight, so fear causes you to either fight or flee. Or... Freeze. That's what terror does emotionally to us. Right? Now, whenever we conceive evil, whether we're on the receiving end of it or on the giving end of it, we are generally involved in one of those three emotions. <laughs> Where we wish to fight we wish to flee, get away from a situation, or we just go into shock. Now, I've told this story before, but my father used to shoot uh, rabbits in Australia. Rabbits in Australia are treated as if they are like vermin. They were brought from the English a couple of hundred years ago to Australia, and before then, Australia didn't have rabbits. And so what happened was uh, the rabbits, when they first came, they very, very rapidly multiplied, and there were literally billions of them in Australia. Billions of them. And uh, they introduced a number of diseases, actually, to control them in Australia. Firstly, there was a disease called myxomatosis, and I can't remember the next disease. But these diseases killed billions of the rabbits in, in their holes, just to get rid of the rabbits. Because what the rabbits were doing was they were eating the bottom of all the trees, so much so that most of the trees which weren't used to the rabbits doing so, most of the trees didn't have hard enough bark and many of the trees died because they got ring barked at the bottom of, the, of all of these trees. And a lot of the, the native flora um, that relied on, and the native fauna that relied on these, the ecosystem died as a result and so it became a big issue. As a result of that, many people in Australia have a, have a deep hatred for any introduced species of animal, including rabbits. And my father is one of those. He, he had this hatred for it. Well, he just viewed them as a vermin that he could shoot. And he used to go out shooting them most uh, weekends, actually. And when I was a child, uh, we used to, I used to ride the motorbike, and he used to be on the back with his 22 rifle shooting rabbits mm -hmm. while I was riding the motorbike. <laughs> but when I was young, younger than that, uh, before I was born, in fact, he uh, described how there were so many rabbits that what they decided to do was that instead of, instead of shooting them, which actually put a hole in their skin, uh, which meant their skin was, their pelt was no longer very, very valuable, and it also put a hole in the flesh, which meant that they couldn't sell the rabbit for food very, uh, very easily. They had to cut off that area of flesh. So, so what they decided to do was to shoot over the top of the head of the rabbit. And the sound barrier crack would freeze the rabbit through terror. It would hear the sound barrier go, the, the bullet go past, the sound barrier crack of the, of the bullet, and it would instantly freeze. And you could actually walk up and pick up the rabbit. And then they'd slit the rabbit's throat or, and bleed it or whatever. The terror of just that sound caused the rabbit to go into a complete frozen state. Right? This is how many of us react to evil. We are so terrified of it that we're actually frozen in its presence. If we don't freeze, then we either attempt to do one of these other two things. We either attempt to flee it, to, to to go away, run away from it, or we wish to fight it. The irony is that if we respond to evil in any one of those three manners, evil will continue. Mm -hmm. So if you try to flee evil, it will follow you. If you try to fight evil, it will grow. 
And if you freeze, it also grows. Because when you understand the psychology of evil, you start understanding why a person decides to be evil. And it's always about causing a person to be frightened so much that they either freeze, flee, or want to fight you. And you like every one of those things, if you're evil. So, this is our normal response to evil. And if we respond in any way, one of these normal ways to evil, we are guaranteed evil will grow. And that's why evil has grown on the planet. Yeah. Does she need? Okay. Um, she probably does, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Carol. <laughs> I feel like there's a fourth way that I respond to evil sometimes, yeah. and that is possibly the worst. Denial? <laughs> no, I try to placate the evil by getting approval. Like I actually join in something that okay. is not loving for yeah. me um, because I, I'm so frightened, I just want to do anything to stop the. That is probably. Yeah, okay. placate like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Placate evil. So you placate it for. D yeah. Or, or try to pander to it. Yeah, I try and make it happy <laughs> in order to go under the rate. Like, it's a fear response, I feel, yeah. but I feel it's the most damaging response I can have for my own soul because yeah. I'm, I'm actually in some way joining the, the damaging thing. Yes, yeah. this idea of placating evil is a great way to avoid one of these emotions or to avoid, in fact, this emotion. So, so what we finish up doing with evil on the planet is we, all, we justify its existence so much that we pander to it. Can you see how that happens in day-to-day -day life? We, you think of uh, you know, when the terror attacks happened in 9-11, right? There was evil there. For the, for the first time on um, on United States soil, and this concept that a person would die just to harm others was for the first time acted out in mass, on mass. Yep. Mind you, uh, it had been happening many other times in the United States if you look at it, because what about the War of Independence? Isn't that sort of a similar concept? But, uh, but unfortunately, you know, we've taken this event and turned it into something a bit larger than perhaps it is. And, but in the process, we, we learned that, okay, evil exists. Somebody who conceived of that particular event obviously had a lot of evil within them, whoever it was that conceived of the event. And for that reason, we then decide that we're going to do something with it. Now, what was America's choice? To fight it. So that was America's choice. Um, and <clears throat> what is the choice of uh, somewhere like um, Iraq? What, what did they choose with that evil? Didn't they choose to placate it? Can you see that? Didn't they choose to support the people who were involved in it, placate it, like pander to the people who supported it? What about other countries in the Middle East? They felt the same, didn't they, at the time? And not only other countries in the Middle East, there were, there were other, other things. What did other countries recommend? So United Nations, before the war actually occurred in Iraq, what did the United Nations recommend? They really <coughs> recommended this, didn't they? Placating it. Yeah. So what I'm trying to illustrate is that every form of uh, every response that mankind generally has to evil, every response that mankind has to evil is mostly about either doing these things and has any of it eradicated evil? 
So that tells me that placating evil does not work. It tells me that going into a frozen state doesn't work. It tells me that fleeing it doesn't work because it just follows you. And it tells me that fighting it doesn't work either because all that happens is evil grows when you fight it. So what works? Can you see why we believe nothing works and therefore evil is the most powerful thing? Can you see that? The reason why I mentioned um, dishonesty before yep. is that I think any time we're dishonest about anything, it opens the door for um, a weakening position. and uh, Evil moves in. And it seems like every time honesty is presented, uh, evil runs and hides. Okay, so truth is sort of an antidote. Yeah, there you go. If we can call it that. And so we'll, we'll, write, we'll talk about that in this discussion, actually, in terms of the lesson of love. Yeah. So can we see that the average way we handle evil does not work? And what I'm going to propose is that there's only one thing that works. It's that weak thing that we just... <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at love again. That's that thing. That's the only thing that works. <laughs> 